The Washington Examiner recently reported that presidential hopeful and Democratic forerunner Bernie Sanders made the following statement while running for governor in 1971. I don't mind people coming up and calling me a communist. Now, during the Rega era, Sanders even campaigned for self-described Trotskyites, a Marxist sect that openly calls for violent revolutions. Sanders' involvement with the Socialist Workers' Party raised so many suspicions that he was even investigated by the FBI. Should this concern Americans? On January 10, 1963, less than 10 years before the senator from Vermont owned the label of communist, Democratic Congressman Albert Erlong Jr. read into the congressional record the 45 communist goals for America, which included number 28. Eliminate prayer or any phrase of religious expression in the schools on the ground that it violates the principle of separation of church and state. Justice William Orville Douglas, nominated by Democrat President Franklin D. Roosevelt, served the longest term on the bench in the Supreme Court's history, 36 years. Douglas wrote, The First Amendment, however, does not say that in every and all respects there shall be a separation of church and state. Otherwise, the state and religion would be aliens to each other, hostile, suspicious, and even unfriendly. Municipalities would not be permitted to render police or fire protection to religious groups. Policemen who helped parishioners into their places of worship would violate the Constitution. Prayers in our legislative halls, the appeals to the Almighty and the messages of the chief executive, the proclamations making Thanksgiving Day a holiday, so help me God in our courtroom oaths, these and all other references to the Almighty that run through our laws, our public rituals, our ceremonies, would be flouting the First Amendment. A fastidious atheist or agnostic could even object to the supplication with which the court opens each session, God save the United States and this honorable court. We find no constitutional requirement which makes it necessary for government to be hostile to religion and to throw its weight against efforts to widen the effective scope of religious influence. We cannot read into the Bill of Rights such a philosophy of hostility to religion. Many of you may not be aware that in the very week that Congress approved the Establishment Clause as part of the Bill of Rights for submission to the states, it enacted legislation providing for paid chaplains for the House and Senate. Chief Justice Warren E. Berger stated, Our history is replete with official references to the value and invocation of divine guidance in deliberations and pronouncements of the Founding Fathers and contemporary leaders. The very chamber in which oral arguments on this case were heard is decorated with a notable and permanent, not seasonal, symbol of religion, Moses with the Ten Commandments. Congress has long provided chapels in the capital for religious worship and meditation. Make no mistake, communists are adversaries of Christianity. And in the words of Declaration signer John Witherspoon, whoever is an avowed enemy of God, I scruple not to call him an enemy of his country. This is Jake McCauley and Dominic McCauley with the Institute on the Constitution, bringing you the, the American, American View. Thank you for taking the time to tune in to our weekly commentary on the Constitution. Here are three ways you can help Dominic and I restore our American constitutional republic. Share, subscribe, comment, and leave a review. This will help others find this valuable information. Please remember to pray for our work. And lastly, donate using the link in the description. God bless you. And thank you.